so Kev. Hey, Rich. Hello. Hello, mate. Uh, I feel, again, as is becoming a tradition on podcast at the moment, I, I think mm. I need to apologize to you, mate. I'm really, really sorry. I, 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 last, I, go on. Yeah, about last week. Um, I feel that it's starting to get a little bit weird. Like I feel like we've got our network save weird, mm. and then we've kind of got podcast weird, and never the two shall meet. Yeah. But I feel like recently... I think there's started to be a little bit of overlap and I, I feel a bit bad right. for you. So that I just want to say 10 minutes was weird, wasn't it? I mean, I'm yeah. Glad so I think this, this week we're just going to go for a, right, we're good to go fellas. Hello. <laughs> Hello there, friends, and welcome back to another episode of Football Manager Therapy. I am your host, Rich Owens, and joining me today, we have the United City FM and we have the returning Jebba Roo. See, Jeb and Callum can't be in the same room at the same time for contractual reasons, mm. uh, but, you know, they rotate. It's fine. It's like rotational options. It's like having two really, really good players in a certain position at your club and you promise them both minutes. And they both hate each other. They don't hate each other at all. Jeb, how are you, pal? How are you? Hello there, friends, and welcome to another episode of Football <laughs> Manager Therapy. I'm your host, Jeb Aru, and joining me today is Rich Owens. Rich, how are we? I'm fu- Wait, no, it's happening again, isn't it? It's happening again. There's, There's been, what, we're, we're a minute into the record and there's already been some kind of uprising uh, oh, no, from, no, no, from no. the co-hosts. I was just Good. asking how you are. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Thank yeah. you. Also you joining like... me today is the United <laughs> City FM. How are you, Kev? Hello, Jebaru. It's nice to have you back in the hot seat. Uh, I'm doing all right, thank you. Um, uh, can I just say, uh, in, in real terms, it is now what well, quarter past 11 on a Sunday morning. I, I meant what I said to you guys before. It. Man United haven't played this weekend yet, and I'm having a lovely time until Monday evening. It's all lovely. Then we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I'm good. Uh, how, how are you guys um, co- co-hosting the pod yes, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah yeah i'm fine yeah i'm i'm i get i feel like if i engage with it i feel like it just becomes a thing i i, I don't know what to do <laughs> rich it's already a thing it's already become a thing hasn't it <laughs> it's already become a thing yeah it's less of a podcast more just psychological warfare against me now which is fine which is so shall we go fine. with what we're going to talk about today on the pod i've got i've got a great list of things that we're going to talk about Oh, have, have you, Jeb? What are we yeah. going to talk about on the podcast today? Uh, He's going to make stuff up now, Rich. Uh, that's dangerous. <laughs> that's really dangerous. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me bring uh, Colton in to tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. You you can host this one. It's fine. <laughs> Do it. But I don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> well, I don't know today's who docket. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Kev. Do you remember how last week's podcast started out really, really weird, and, and you were like, indeed, it, "It felt, Rich. it felt like a network save hangover." I feel like that's what we've drifted into again. So we should try and get it back on track. You, you can do this, Rich. I have faith in you. Oh God, I'll try. I'll really, really try. Okay, so on today's episode of Football Manager Therapy, we have got things to talk about, and I'm not going to try and make them up on the spot. Um, I think we should begin the podcast okay. by. <laughs> I probably am making making the ball up. I'm making them all up. Oh, good. Heckles. We're at that stage now. Good. Um, <laughs> podcast. So today on the dance card, we have got, uh, we're going to start by revisiting um, our discussion from last week. Because my goodness gracious me, we said to you, the audience, after we talked about the attributes that we feel make a perfect striker on last week's episode, we opened that up to you. The audience said, but tell us about yours. What do you think about this? And people had opinions shockingly enough it's really weird when you ask people a question about something subjective football manager based online people tell you people people do tell you that's not always the case is it i mean occasionally we say Mm. give us a thought and everybody just goes (laughs) but on this occasion it really did work so thank you for it they really did people people did have feelings um before actually you know what before we go to the public forum Mm-hmm. Jeb, you weren't able to make last week's episode, but I know you've listened to it at least three times because you Obviously. just 
bloody love it. It's also in the if contract. Have, so. It is in the contract. Yeah, everyone has to listen and, to it. Andy it, was trying to make uh, some sense of what was going on during most of it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely the, the first 10 minutes, it. see the thumbnail. So there we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jeb. If you had been on, if you had been on that episode, and, and we were talking perfect striker attributes, if you had to pick your five, where are you going with that? What's your approach? Uh, well, somebody actually asked this on the YouTube page, and I just responded to it. Marcus Dacas <laughs> has eighteen jump and reach. So there we go. That hey! yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. simple. <laughs> no. yeah. His next best for uh, natural fitness, pace, determination, and balance. So those, I guess. So there's your five done. Right, let's go. Yeah, now, smashed it. I would say. And I think the first thing that came to my head was anticipation uh, for the finishing mm -hmm. side of things. I think jumping mm -hmm. reach is more important than heading because Marcus Dacus has kind of proved that for, for me because he can't head the ball, but he can jump really high at six foot seven. Uh, and then even, I don't know, it's quite difficult because Araujo's obviously my big striker in the network save. Mm -hmm. And he's just mm -hmm. average across everything. He's got nothing that's over outstanding. Uh, mm -hmm. Determination, I think, just to get to the ball, to put the ball in the back of the net. And I always, it's always something that I always look for in most players anyway. Teamwork, work rate, positioning, mm -hmm. those three. I've never, I don't think they were talked about too much. Shows how much I listen, but those three are <laughs> always, uh, always key for every player that I bring in because it's, that, that's something that I'll look for. So I think, yeah, work, work rate is definitely one of those. It, it's always in my, and we, this, this came up, we mentioned that the yeah. SAS DNA last week, um, it's such, it's such a really, really nice feature on, mm -hmm. on his skin. So if you're not using the SAS mask skin, by the way, we'll drop, we'll link it in the description of this week's episode everywhere, but it gives you a specific set of attributes that you can just kind of load in and it will automatically display them for every, it will highlight them for every single player that you're looking at. And that is definitely one of the ones that tends to feature when I'm, you know, just, it's, it's something that I try and look for in most players in some capacity. Yeah. But I think it's, for me, it's more of those like all encompassing, it's a men, you know, mentality things I look for rather than specifically looking for it in a striker, if that makes sense. So I think that that helps a little bit more. So I'm, I'm very much work rate over teamwork. I, I find okay. it easy to quantify work rate in terms of, you know, the desire to just carry on doing what you do time and time again, never giving up, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <The> actual... <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly that but it, in terms of what teamwork actually does what does that mean that your striker is gonna go come on team i think like, i think i think you're right in so you want a, sometimes you want a selfish striker who's just gonna put the ball in the back of the net every time he gets it or mm -hmm. attempt to mm. and you get frustrated when he misses loads mm -hmm. uh but Hello, Darwin Nunes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hello, Cody Gakpo. Right. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I think I think there is there is a level to it. I guess if you're playing as a two, you definitely want a bit of teamwork in there. I think mm -hmm. teamwork's probably a bit more dependent on your, your midfielders because you want them working hard for the team and up and down the pitch. Mm -hmm. Same with central defenders if you form in partnerships. I guess it's a little less for strikers. Uh, decision making, I think, got brought up. I think that's that's also another one. It's mm -hmm. quite similar. Where you do you, do you want that person to put it in the back of the net every time, or do you want them to actually think about what they're doing and maybe just play it across the across the box and somebody yeah. can put it away a bit easier? So mm -hmm. there's lots of things to think about, and, and I know people have done very, 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 very deep dives on what each individual attribute does and mm -hmm. how it works, etc. But I guess there's a there's a certain DNA like like Sasmas has brought up in 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 his skin and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But usually the one that is composure, finishing, off the ball, and uh, technique, that's usually what you mm -hmm. look for in a striker. Yeah. But yeah, I think anticipation and determination are quite key for me. Mm -hmm. uh, jump in reach, I think, if you're having a big striker, definitely. And then it's having a bit of agility if you're going for a smaller striker so they can wriggle into those spaces and get in there as well. Mm. I think that's fair. I think one of the uh, one of the comments that we have on on Twitter, one of the responses to our tweets, somebody mentioned uh, James Massey uh, mentioned decision making. He was surprised hadn't come up um, on the pod record for any of any of us. And I think it, it's one of those. It's I think decision making across the board because you, you've mentioned there again. It's when we were designing our strikers last week or, or talking about the, the perfect attributes. 
obviously size was a factor for some of us, especially Kev with his large community <laughs> strikers. You know, I think agility, absolutely, especially if it's a smaller player, is going to help them more. But again, somebody who's big and agile, you tend to see it a lot more kind of, you know, six or seven years into a save where the absolutely bonkers regen start coming through. And they've got attributes all over the shop and it's having somebody who's six foot five who's got like 18 agility and you're like suddenly you're in love just straight away <laughs> can't jump but they can shimmy um but it's it's one of those like the decision making kind of again it, it's it, all inclusive because it doesn't matter if you you know you've got a, a, a nippy little player or a big beefy man it's that ability i suppose to get their head up and, and look around in the box and you know decide whether the shot's the best thing to take on or if there's a pass on it's it's something that yeah i think that's kind of an all-encompassing one so i think in hindsight might it should it have made anybody's top five last week maybe who's to say it's, i still would back my strikers in most situations yeah i was gonna say i was just i'm just looking at erling harland on network so mm -hmm. we're five seasons into his 27 so i could be peak of career decision making's mm -hmm. 15 and everything else is like pretty much 17 and above <laughs> so it's actually not that high positioning is a i forget i always forget with positioning is actually kind of false in mm. fm attributes because it's a defensive minded yes, thing it it's is. not an attacking yeah. thing it's yeah, off so. the yeah. ball that you need yeah. for the attacking yeah yeah, mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah. but yeah but decision yeah. making is, is is another one is that more so for like a creative ball player in midfield to you know unlock defenses or is it something that you should be uh deliberately trying to find across your team in every position to uh keep them all on the same wavelength as each other I, again that's another one that i'm not sure exactly what impact that absolutely has in those different key positions across the pitch really and i think uh Concentration is quite important as well because if you're playing dreadfully, you kind of want that concentration to be high on a striker because they're, they're still invested in the game. It's not a case of just going to switch off going, oh, we're playing dreadful, what's the point? You can still have somebody mm -hmm. who'll just poke the ball in from three or four yards out that you want to do because they're just still concentrated on the game. So Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my five att attributes are all of them. <laughs> <laughs> in conclusion... <laughs> In conclusion, uh, this is where we let. The, actually, this this podcast isn't a podcast. It's a maths intervention for Jeb. Um, <laughs> can you count to five? No, it's it's yeah, just everything, just just the whole the whole load of them. Um, last week's episode was loads and loads and loads of fun. I really mm. really enjoyed it, and and again, watching the feedback rolling in from everybody in in all of its glory has been really really nice. So, we will be revisiting that that format of episodes um over the next few months for sure because obviously you know we we had originally intended talking about defenders on last week's at record <laughs> yeah it didn't and get to that as it we? turns out there's just so much <laughs> it, it, it's really weird fm is subjective who knew who <sighs> knew um everybody as it turns out everyone that's ever played it so yeah we will talk center backs obviously midfielders there's a whole gamut of positions to work our way through so mm -hmm. They will absolutely be coming up. So keep keep your eyes out for more of those. But thank you, everybody, for your feedback. It was massively appreciated. Um, I know, and, and sometimes uh, incredibly in depth. <laughs> so thank oh you. my god, so in depth, so in depth. Some some of the feet, especially on on the jumping reach. Like <laughs> some some of you guys went above and beyond on that. And I'll hand on heart, hand on heart. I haven't had time to read all of them because some of them were, were quite extensive. So thank you, firstly, for putting in that much effort into your research and secondly thank you for what i can only assume is agreeing with everything that we said and just just backing us up i, I us have read them right. all rich and yeah that's mm -hmm. basically what happened oh that's a relief <laughs> I, I think i fell asleep about an hour and a half into one of them like i was, I was reading it there was just like <laughs> <laughs> hey guys give us your feedback so we can roast it boom um that's that's the direction no, my mind was now. more just give us give us the feedback so i can fall asleep once i've, it's like I've got through like half of it yeah <laughs> but oh, thank you good. thank you thank you everybody you're all good people we appreciate you all enormously um so yeah ev everybody has different opinions on, on what makes great strikers but you know mm -hmm. there's no doubt there's not not a single one did i look at and think to myself you know what that striker is going to be awful you can all guarantee if those strikers had very very good attributes in those areas they would score all the goals just just all of them all just, of them just every last one of them so good good for them good for them um look hey if anybody uh, here's a thought that i'm having right now if anybody wants uh -oh. to do this 
I don't have the capacity or the time, but if you do, if you want to make strikers with those attributes and just test them in databases and send us some results, by all means, feel free to. It's unlikely, but sure, why not? Don't ask, don't get. So if you've got a bit of time this week and you were, hey, let's make some strikers with some weird attributes and put them into a save and then see who scores the most goals. Carte blanche. Do what you want to do. I'm not your dad. Can't make you. Good. There we go. Um, so there you go. We've had a little recap on last week's record, which was absolutely lovely. Now moving on to the present day, mm. because it's all about it's all about the here and now. Well, <laughs> technically, at the time of recording, actually the yesterday. Because we've talked on this podcast quite a lot before about, you know, our, our various successes in terms of league titles, you know, playoffs, our approaches to successful seasons in Football Manager. Sometimes it doesn't always go your way. Sometimes it's not that straightforward. You might find yourself where you are in a little bit of a relegation dogfight. Um, of course, this has been inspired and by the championship this season. So many clubs could have gone down in the championship this season. And yesterday's final day of the championship was nothing short of incredible. I think every team in the bottom six, with the exception of Huddersfield, won yesterday, which was absolutely bonkers. But I think it's an important thing to, you know, to, to look at and, you know, look at how we approach these kind of situations in the context of a football manager save. What do you do when you find yourself in that relegation dogfight? Have you ever taken it all the way to the last day of the season and needed results? It's a huge thing because sometimes it can be the breaking point over the course of a save, especially if it's a one clubber. Um, Jeb, I mean, we'll start with you, Paul. Have you found yourself in, in similar sets of circumstances to a lot of championship teams did yesterday? Last day of the season, you need a win to stay up. Is that something that you have any kind of experience with in Football Manager? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was even trying to think back to the old FMT challenges, like the Wickham one. No, mm -hmm. I was fine on it. I was like, I was like, <laughs> mm. just like 14th and it was fine. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I smashed Wickham. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> all I'm saying, all I'm saying, that Wickham challenge, Sammy yeah. Smoddix, top goal scorer in the championship for me that season. So yeah. I'm and now just look saying, at him now. There you go. Now look at him go now. Yeah, yeah. You know, I knew he could do it, but, yeah. you know, he didn't know he could do it. But I tweet him a lot. I don't. I've, I've never contacted that man in my life. But you know, I like to think that's what spurred him on. Yeah, Malachi Jeff Linton. Just just remembered him. Like I think he oh, plays for goodness. Kings Lynn now, doesn't he? You know, he's just <laughs> yes. never made it, but he was just at uh, acceleration and pace twenty done. That's all he needed. <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah, all you needed the championship. His decision making was about two, I think, if I remember correctly, <laughs> and his concentration was about the same. So yeah, uh, wow. But but yes, he could run very fast, and sometimes mm -hmm. the ball hit him in the right place, and it went in the back of the net. But yeah. Uh, no, I've not really experienced too much of relegation or anything. Uh, I think I think the only, the only one that I've had was when the last time I managed Morecambe was when they wouldn't give me any money in League One, so I left them, and I left them seventh in League Two, and Joey Barton took over. Well, what a guy that guy is! Uh, he took over and he lost every game, <laughs> every game for the rest of the season, and they got relegated. That's probably about the closest I've been to flirting with relegation. I don't know. I guess no, even like Pescara, like Pescara was the first season we went into Serie A I was I was tenth, so no. There's nothing in flirting too much. Even like the relegation zone generally, no. Hmm. Guess not. What Sauce. I'm hearing from this is that Jeb <laughs> thinks he's really, really good at FM. That's what I, I heard that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Too good to get relegated mm -hmm. um, is is Jeb's approach to it. Uh, Kev, what about you though, mate? Is is it something you you've been close? You've danced with the danced with the relegation zone. So I was sitting here listening to Jeb, and in my mind, I'm going, "Wouldn't it be really, really funny if I just went nope?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to take one for the team and say, "Yeah, I've experienced that for various reasons." But I will preface it with. The most recent version of being involved in a relegation fight uh, came off the back of back-to-back -back promotions with my Stoke City side in my Rolling in the Isles series mm. this time round. League One to the Premier League in two seasons meant that the Premier League was incredibly difficult and turned out to be that. And all season long, I was in and around sort of 17th to 19th. Um, I think it was Wolves that were 
dreadful at the bottom of it, I believe, and went down as uh, the 20th spot. But the, the other two spots were between three or four of us for most of the season. And it was literally on the last day of the season that my Stoke City side got the result we needed and just clawed ourselves out by about a point into 17th position and stayed in. And then I resigned and ran away because I didn't think I could do much better than that with them in the Premier League. Uh, they started off like a freight train in the following season without me, but have since plummeted and are now sitting bottom of the league. So I feel like I've made the right choice. But yeah, it's, it's tricky, isn't it? There's there's lots of ways in which you can look in on a, a season in, a, a, in any league in terms of what your predicted per finish is going to be. Because ultimately, I came up from back-to-back -back promotion. So I was 19th or whatever it was in the predictions or 20th. So I expected to have that. There are other times where you get going in a season and it just doesn't quite work out how you expect it. You may be predicted um, mid-table finish and you struggle at the beginning and find yourselves in that relegation zone and all of a uh, sudden you've got a scrap on your hands. And there, there are different approaches in terms of what the expectation was. I set myself up thinking this is going to be a hard season. So I've got a balanced defensive and attacking version of my tactical setup that I rotate through. And my intention was to play the balanced and the defensive one for most of the season uh, and see if I can suppress games. Actually, the attacking version made uh, a bit of a difference here and there to win a couple of points on the occasions when I used it uh, quite successfully. But Ultimately, yeah, I have been involved in them. They are tricky. There is no magic answer to it, particularly. Um, but I will, again, preface it. I got back-to-back -back promotions, so it was kind of expected. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because I think one of the things, like, Jet being the example here, if you've never been involved in one, is that ever to do with the fact that it's – not all that common in saves where, especially recently, where boards will let you stay in the job long enough to kind of find your way into one. Unless prime example, Kev being your Stoke side, where, you know, back-to-back mm. -back promotions, you've gone up two divisions. The expectation wouldn't necessarily be for you to stay in the league. Quite frequently, and again, I'm, I'm going back through through older saves of, of my own, for example. If I look at my Sheffield Wednesday save from FM21, for example, I got them into the Premier League after three years. And then the first year in the Premier League, got them, I think, 10th, maybe 9th. It was like top half finish, and I was expected to get relegated. Mm -hmm. And then the next season, the expectation was around, you know, 12th, 13th, like, you know, probably not, you're not going to go down, but you're not going to, you know, not expecting top half, just mid to lower mid table, just casual mediocre season, which as a Sheffield Wednesday fan in real life, I would kill for, by the way, please just, just <laughs> let me enjoy football for one year. It's all I ask. And then in that save, I was struggling and I was just above the relegation zone for the vast majority of the season. And then I got given an ultimatum in like February. You've got, you know, you've got a month to save your job. And I quit the save. Spoiler alert. I, I rage quit the save with a game to go because I just didn't want to get sacked and, and be sad. But at that stage, I don't think I would have, you know, I wasn't going to be given the opportunity to spend the entire season trying to stop that relegation. And, you know, like I say, I, I needed, I think they wanted 10 points from five games and also two, I think it was two wins from five games. And I won one, I had one game left to play and then I quit the save because I just didn't want the injustice of, of getting sacked. Mm -hmm. But even if I'd won that game, would they have given me another three months in charge? You know, would they have let me stay on and try and keep the club up? Would they have just called me back into the boardroom again after my next loss and said, right, it's still not going very well. We're going to set wave goodbye to you. It's kind of rare you get given the opportunity these days to kind of, you know, try and stave off relegation. I think it's more when you take over a club midway through a season. That's when you really get the opportunity. Um, Rosenborg for me last year, for example, when I did the Scandinavian Triple Crown, I took them over. They were second bottom of the league and I couldn't get them out of that position all season long, but they did not sack me. So mm. he's just arrived. We'll just give him till the end of the year. And it went down to the last day, it went down to the very, very last day. 
and I think the only reason I was allowed to stay in the job for that lot of, you know, allowed to finish the season was because I was a new manager. I think if I'd got them relegated, they would have sacked me at the end of the season. But obviously they can the manager halfway through the season because they'd started so badly. So again, it's actually kind of rare these days. FM gives you the opportunity to find yourself in that relegation mm. dogfight. It's horrible as, you know, like I say, a suffered through it with Rosenborg and I think suffered is the right word because it was so dejecting it was so dejecting yeah I, I, I think I made, sorry it's Rich. horrible sorry no, Rich. No, you're fine, I, I, I think you're on to something because uh sitting here now uh halfway through the game cycle of FM24 my, my FM24 has gone reasonably well in in terms of um clubs and sackings and other bits and pieces I, I i haven't really experienced it at the moment i tend to jump before they push but i do know over the last two iterations of the game i have been sacked a lot uh to a to the point where genuinely looking back on fm23 i know i got sacked four or five times in fm23 and i can only remember two of them now in terms of what they actually were because my memory has just kind of shut them down and put them away uh, but i mean brighton was a key example in our network save where i got six months in we were in the bottom three they weren't happy and they booted me out i had a stream uh in a save of mine over the last couple of iterations where i was in the boardroom five times over the course of two streams i think it was um before ultimately i got booted out and that was before the end of a season in that sense it is very rare that you get the opportunity mm. to get to the see the end of the season and try and save yourself i think that's probably very justified as a as a thought process there because i've definitely experienced that over the last couple of fms myself yeah Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to all of your mods in the comments who are listing all of this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no <laughs> doubt. I have absolutely... I, I have this real problem of my of my memory of saves isn't actually that strong. Once it's done and I move on to the next one, I kind of just let that go somehow. But you can sit in the middle of a stream and just go, do you remember I think a thing with a thing? And they go, yeah, it was on that date with this particular person. It happened three times in a row on that occasion. But... And I go, okay, I'll believe yeah. you. We've made the command for it and everything. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah so there we are. <laughs> they have. There are so many commands in my stream on my failings at Valencia, for example. I think that's that. That's something like, like I said, the the if you almost play it with you, almost get sacked straight away. One of the things with with the Markovic, I've been offered so many job interviews by teams that are in relegation zones in mm -hmm. Championship or even Premier League, which still baffles me because I've barely, I've not even touched the playoffs with Morecambe yet. Uh, more on that later but uh yeah it's but i never get those jobs so i've never really had those opportunities because I, I am quite happy to go do like a tangent save as well so just mm -hmm. keep going with the market thing but then go off and do another universe where i'm banned to birmingham or something like that but nobody hires me it's like it's like the network save no, no i don't get any offers of the big jobs i'm doing really well at wolves and there's gonna be nothing there's gonna be an interview at city it's not fair <coughs> anyway, weird because yeah, yeah, you are the master of leverage, Jeb. Surely, 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 they, surely. Would, they would consider you for a bigger job. Well, we don't have the yeah. Spanish league lined up, so I can't take over Barcelona and do the same thing. So. <laughs> 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 speaking, speaking of the network save, I, I looked into it because I was looking at some other things. I'm in big trouble with FFP. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's something I might have to focus on next stream that we do. Yeah. So there we go. Wow. Okay. Big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's Balancing good. the books. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, it's it's easily done. It's very very easily done. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Like the amount of clubs that, and again, you, I don't tend to see it that frequently because I don't get offered jobs. I, I think because I don't stay with clubs long enough, especially in the context of um, my what's the story say, for example, mm -hmm. the longest amount of time I've spent at a club is two years. So it's rare within those two years you see a huge amount of job offers start to roll in. But when they do start coming in mid-season, I say, it's always going to be clubs in trouble because they've just mm -hmm. sacked the manager. But it's a really, really weird position to want to put yourself in. So if you're successfully managing a championship football club, for example, and you get an offer from a Premier League team that are in trouble, if that doesn't work out, you're actually in the exact, you're just in the exact same position you are in now, but with exponentially more pressure on you, aren't you? Because you know, if you're managing a, a relegated Premier League team, the expectation is you bounce straight back up. So it, it's a weird one. It is a weird one. It it's a, it's a it's a difficult sell 
it's really, you know, you've got to go, you know, when I went to Rosenberg, for example, I went there because I was like, this is a better way of me completing this challenge faster because Rosenborg are a better team than Odds Ball Club. But it's it's a it's got to be a hard sell because again, some, there was a tweet this week and somebody was saying, you know, what's one of the most you know, in the nicest possible way, pointless features of Football Manager? And some I can't remember who it was, but that somebody said manager wages because that's yeah. not you know because somebody say, hey, come to this club and we'll pay you twenty five grand a week, and I was like, but that makes literally no impact on the game in any mm-hmm. way, shape, or form. So that to me isn't a USP for me wanting to go and move from an overperforming League One club to an underperforming championship club or premier league club for example unless so, unless somebody makes like a sims add-on where you can build a house <laughs> in the background oh <laughs> yeah. be, oh imagine yeah that's that's the, yeah the only thing i want from lma manager to, to feature a foot manager build your own stadium build your own properties around yeah. the ground no and, just, just yep. yours not enough to do in the stadium you, you just spent your oh, 25 grand. i can upgrade the couch in that house now that's lovely oh, imagine yeah. that oh imagine that oh that'd be lovely Oh there no, Bella Bella Goff's come around again. All oh, right, anyway, sorry, get, get enough tension. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be lovely, actually. Yeah. What can you spend? What can you spend your yeah? Oh, imagine that. See, that's that's the future we all want. It's like new star soccer on your phone. Oh yeah, you've you've made you've 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 got twenty grand in the bank. You can buy a racehorse. Yes. <laughs> and then and then the game just goes down a really, really dark path. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. It's not it's but yeah. Relegated clubs or clubs in trouble, hard sell for a new manager. Kind Rich. of rare for you to find yourself in that position as a, as a current one. Yes, Kev. question for you. Gen- genuine question. And it may come across as something that I don't intend it to do. I'm a Man United fan and mm-hmm. I've had a bad season with Man United, but they're in like seventh or eighth or whatever. And that's a bad season for Man United. Mm-hmm. It's a, a kind of a weird thing in terms of IRL football to talk about relegation threatened sides and other mm-hmm. bits and pieces. Now, I know that Wednesday have had a, an up and down season a little bit. And, uh, you know, where did they ultimately finish? Uh, yesterday, I think we made it to, I know at one point yesterday, we were at the dizzying heights of 19th in the table. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it might have been because everybody won. Mm-hmm. I think we, 20th, yeah, because Rovers won. They okay. uh, they they picked some goal difference. But yeah, we finished 20th yesterday. So I, I had some interesting conversations with some Birmingham City fans this week across the community. And mm-hmm. some of them were utterly desperate to stay up. And mm-hmm. some of them were actually suggesting actually going down to League One and having a successful season down there might not actually be the worst thing in the world. It would be quite fun to watch. It will give uh, an opportunity to go and you know see new teams and other bits and pieces because we are not in the position where we are trying to push to get into the top flight and ultimately win across the entirety of English football. So actually, it doesn't ultimately matter too much where we are in the structure as long as we're playing football and enjoying it. As a Sheffield Wednesday fan, if you were to be offered the thought of next season really struggling at the very bottom of the championship or really successful at the top of League One for a season, what would you take as an IRL football fan, just out of curiosity? First of all, how dare you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, no, it's a very, it is a really, really good question. Um, I think the one thing I will say from, from a Birmingham perspective is that, you know, they weren't, ex- you know, if for a Birmingham fan to say they weren't expecting to be, you know, accomplishing great things this season. I mean, just saying where they were in the league before uh, Wayne Rooney took over compared mm-hmm. to what happened at the end of the season. Yep. Great decision. Yikes. <laughs> Superb decision making. Nice one, Tom Brady. Uh, you smash that, pal. Um, so, as a Sheffield Wednesday fan, I think I've, I've got a bit of a, not unique perspective, but the question that you've kind of asked of, of us there, Kev, is that actually we've already done it because mm-hmm. it happened two years ago. We got relegated. And at that point, I think we need the relegation because we were we were nowhere near good enough for the championship. We had a lot of comparatively bigger name players on astronomical wages that just weren't good enough or weren't playing well enough at that mm-hmm. level. So getting shot of all of those, relying extensively on the free transfer market for, a, for at least 18 months because our chairman is insane and the club's finances are, are in just, it's just a mystery. Uh, are we profitable? Are we make hemorrhaging money? Who knows, Mr. Chancery? Who knows? <laughs> but we did that. We had that. We, we went down and then we did some rebuilding. And then we had two decent campaigns 
in the championship. Mm-hmm. Obviously, coming up in the way that we did at the end of last season was was nothing short of a miracle. What an absolutely incredible playoff campaign that was. And then to come back up into the championship this season, a little bit of, you know, we didn't spend huge amounts of money by any stretch of the imagination, not even by championship standards, Mm -hmm. not even by League One standards, really. But through a combination of free signings and, you know, spending little bits of money in the right places, we've built a comparatively decent championship level team. Now, the reason that we spent had the season that we had and the, se- the the reason that we found ourselves in a relegation battle is because we made absolutely hideous decisions at the start of this season, sacking Darren mm-hmm. Moore because Darren Moore said, I'd like a little bit of money, please. And the chairman going, how dare you sacking him, despite the fact that he said, I want us to get into the playoffs. And then the conversation going, I want playoffs. Okay, I need some money. How dare you <laughs> get out? And then just hiring uh, Zisco, who was, an absolute liability. Mm-hmm. We went 13 games winless at the start of the season. We had four points from our first 13 games before uh, Danny Rule took over. And then for him to have done what he did with that team, who's, meant to, who's you know, just morale would have been through the floor. Um, mm-hmm. And he turned them into a functioning and like, uh, he turned us into a good team. Mm-hmm. Like into if you look at if you look at end of season form from January through to through to May, like across like most professional leagues, Sheffield Wednesday were were there or thereabouts. I mean, there was a time last season. Sorry, uh, there was a time last season in League One where if you looked at our form table, we were the most informed professional club in world football, which mm-hmm. is bonkers. But to take a team who were that bad and, and turn it around and, and turn them into a team that were really really good was was nothing short of incredible. Um, I did the maths yesterday. If, if Danny Rule had been in charge all season and scored points at the same ratio he did after he took over, Sheffield Wednesday would have finished one point off the playoffs, mm-hmm. which is staggering. So we've done what a lot of Birmingham fans are talking about. We took that hit and you know we dropped down a league and we got rid of a lot of the, the higher earning players, recruited well, Mm-hmm. And then built back up and then put ourselves back into a league where we should have had a fighting chance all season long. And the fact that, you know, we've had the season that we've had, that was just down to, again, poor decision making at the very, very top. I think if Darren Moore had stayed this season, Darren Moore would have comfortably kept us in the division. Mm. I don't think we would have been chasing the playoffs, but I think we would have finished. Like I'm just I'm looking at the the championship table now. If you look at somebody like, you know, the teams like Cardiff City, Bristol, Preston North End, all finished comfortably 60 plus points. Mm-hmm. I think that's where we would have sat this season had we kept Darren Moore. Um, obviously, if, if Danny Rule had been here all season, we would have been there or thereabouts anyway, because you can speculate about, you know, it's there's, there's sure. different things that come in. So I think we've done it. And when you do it well, it works. Mm -hmm. I think it's sometimes it can be a necessity for a football club because, you know, somebody like a Birmingham city, you know, it's, there was a montage I saw yesterday of, of, of pundits. And, you know, the first 30 seconds was just about a dozen different pundits saying they're too good to go down (laughs) or they're too big to go down. Uh And then the next 30 seconds with the same dozen pundits using phrases like nobody's too big to go down. Nobody's too big to get relegated. And you can argue that about a team like Birmingham. City, you can argue about a team like Sheffield Wednesday. You know, they're, they're comparatively well established football clubs. It wasn't that long ago that Huddersfield were a Premier League team mm-hmm. and they've been relegated. Sure. So it's sometimes it's a necessity because you can't just keep throwing money that clubs, you know, a lot of these clubs don't have the money just to keep, you know, just chucking cash at it and trying to, you know, plug that hole with the next big signing. So sometimes it is a necessity. And I, I wish I wish Birmingham fans all the best. I really hope they have a really good League One campaign next season, and I hope they they find themselves there or thereabouts come the end of the season. Hmm. It it is a palate cleanser. It is sometimes a necessary one. And as somebody who's you know whose club has been through it, I think you can come out the other side. Well, I just think mm-hmm. that you know it's and again it's always going to be comparatively easier for some of those quote unquote bigger clubs with that bigger reputation, like a Sheffield Wednesday, like a Birmingham City, 
because you know you've got the you know the, the the reputation of the club is there you're always going to attract a slightly better quality of you know high level league so, level level championship player so, so herein respect herein lies the issue i think looking in mm -hmm. on this sort of stuff as a fan of a football club you've got very little control as to how it's run or who does what decision making or how successful those decisions are and you kind of have to roll with the punches so if your team ultimately go down on the occasion of going down there is a sadness there is a frustration all those kinds of things but over the course of the summer you then have to kind of regather yourself and say well i'm still supporting them i'm still backing them we're going to go again and see where we can get to that is your role as a fan in fm you're the manager and it's a completely different thing because if your team go down, ultimately you failed. And especially as a streamer of a team who fail, it's not a nice thing because there's so many people telling you how much better they could have been at doing what you're trying to do. Uh, and the response to them most of the time is until you have streamed yourself, you have no idea what it is to play this game and stream it at the same time. It's quite a different thing at times. But that's the, di that's the difference, isn't it? As a fan, you have limited options. You have to kind of support your team regardless, mostly. You can disagree with the type of decision-making process and other things, but you just kind of go with it. But as a manager in this game, if I'd have got relegated, even with Stoke City, I'd have thought that was a failure. Not because I was predicted to stay up, because I wasn't. But you have this sense of, I've played FM for 30 years or whatever, of course I'll keep them up because I know FM. It doesn't always work out that way. And then, you know, the conversations that we've already had about um, being denied the opportunity to get to the end of the season by a club because they just pulled a trigger, etc. It becomes a failure. And that's hard to take as a manager, especially when you're doing it in the public stream, as it were. It feels a little bit. Thoughts? Mm. Absolutely. I think it's 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 difficult to lose on stream. I think it, I think it is. You know, we we all there's there's that running joke within within just streaming in general, isn't there? If you chatter, bullying you a little bit, it's because they're actually invested in you as a person. It's mm. like ha ha ha! Isn't this really really good fun? Yeah, yeah. But when you're sat there in the moment, it's still like ah. Oh, but it's because I'm having a bad time. Mm -hmm. FM is a hard game to do that with because, you know, regardless of how you set up, how you do things, there is always, you know, it feels like in the background, there's always that little element of RNG there. There's always, oh, I've lost this game 1-0, but I've had 75 shots on goal and I scored one own goal from their only attack in the game. If I replayed that game, I'd win 17-0, but it's not the way it went. But there's also an audience in here watching me having to experience that. And, you know, the, some of them, their their response is going to be, Ah, you're really bad at the game. <laughs> ah, you're terrible. Ah, you suck. So it is difficult. It is it is difficult thing, regardless of what people might say. I think it's a difficult thing to try and separate yourself from. You know, like the it, ah, we lost. It doesn't matter. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit harder to take, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's mm. sometimes it's, yeah. Sometimes good. Sometimes bad. Maybe. If you said that in an Italian accent in a press conference and replaced bad with a different word. Yeah, I know exactly. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. maybe. Yeah, there we are. Some, sometimes uh, maybe. Yeah. Cheers, Katusa. <laughs> no, no. So I think yeah, I think it's, it's important with the stream is not to let your frustrations get the better of you as well when it's going wrong. I mean there have been some angry moments from certain streamers when they're losing games, etc., or losing competitive stuff as well. So some people take mm -hmm. it a bit too seriously. At the end of the day, it's a game. Try yeah. the game how you want to play the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, I think that that's always important to point out. I think it's relegation-wise, it might happen if I get promoted with Morecambe at some stage. I don't know. It might happen mm -hmm. elsewhere. But I do think, I think it is quite clear and it might be something in fn this year that they are quite quick to pull the trigger on like most boards mm -hmm. i don't think there's like a friendly board around although morecambe have been really friendly to me because i've not achieved any one of their targets so <laughs> <laughs> and i've gone into the boardroom with ronald mcdonald and he sat there in his clown outfit eating his big macs like, honestly his name is ronnie mcdonald uh, <laughs> never give me any money never give me any of that sweet 
chicken nugget money. Uh, <laughs> oh, but but yeah. you're, you're, you're fortunate, Jeb, that they've got your list of achievements that you're yeah. trying to do, and they can see that you're ticking a couple of them off. So that's, you know. Well, no, the ones the ones that are happy that I'm ticking, ticking off is like, don't play this player that you're not playing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I won't play him. That's fine. <laughs> okay. I've, yep. I've done it. I've got one favor. I've sold him. I've just released him. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> A plus, A plus. We love you. Yeah. So there you go. And they get get four happy meals for free. Great. Yes. Yeah, it's it's not even just released him from his contract, released him out into the wild. Yeah. Just drove out into the woods, asked him to get out and just sped off. Yeah, exactly. Into the, the wild woods of Morecambe. Yeah. They definitely yeah. exist. I've been and there. I just hide the contract under my keyboard. So my yeah. keyboard's quite high at the moment, but shh, don't yeah. tell them. Exactly. Yeah. You never notice when Jeb types his hands are actually up here. It's, <laughs> he looks he looks like he's operating a puppet. He's not. He's he's definitely not. No. Yeah, it, it yeah. I, you are right. I think they do pull the trigger, but hey, isn't that just football manager replicating real life football sometimes? Because as we know, as we all know, especially the higher up the, the table you go, the higher up the pyramid you go, those boards are a little bit too trigger happy sometimes, aren't they? Mm. Although in saying that, you know, I support a football club that have sacked two managers in about the last three years after a run of about 12 games. And I was delighted with both of those decisions. So, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, I am the biggest hypocrite going up yours, Tony Pugliss. I hope you're listening to this. You've got nothing better to do with your time. Yeah, of course he's listening. Pugliss. <laughs> Never got a club relegated because you didn't stick around long enough to watch it happen, Tony. You coward um so there we go wow there we go. Okay. relegations that's us in, involved in terrific. some legal stuff then <laughs> stand by it nothing nothing i've said there is untrue nothing i've said there is untrue <laughs> yeah sam allardyce hung around didn't he was he at leeds that got relegated or was it west brom or was it both could have been oh, both who knows yeah. i feel like it's west brom i feel like yeah. west brom was the uh was his first like proper relegation Proper relegation. Proper. Even proper. Pro- proper. proper. Um, Covered in gravy. <laughs> <laughs> right, weird again. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Wait, wait. Back on the tracks. Back on the tracks. Uh, we promised Kevin normal episode. There, there, it's, yeah, it's. But hey, there are people out there. there. There are people who stream. There are people who blog. There are people that play the game. And they specifically love a relegation dogfight there are people who specialize in sim half a season take over the club at the foot of the table Mm -hmm. and try and keep them up and if that is you if that's what you do if that's if that's your bag on fm let us know how you approach it because again that was something i did on my youtube channel years ago and it provided Mm. me with the hardest bit of football manager i've ever done when i went to china and found the Mm -hmm. bottom club of their league and spent half a season with them and basically lost every single game and could not figure out how to change a damn thing about it it was bizarre it's uh, it's, uh, Jeb and I mentioned at the beginning of the pod, one of the very, very old um, Discord challenges Mm -hmm. was Wickham, taking over Wickham Wanderers, bottom of the championship at Christmas and trying to keep them up. And both Jeb and I did really, really well at it. Um, I think think it was a shout out to friend of the pod, friend of everybody, uh, Arn Furious, who won that challenge. Uh, he did an absolutely incredible job. I think he t- took them from bottom of the table to something like 11th, mm-hmm. something ridiculous like that. Um, we started that challenge, and I, I remember looking at the, the fi- looking at everyone's final results and me on being like, oh, yeah, I, I finished 11th, and I think I got them comparatively close. Mm-hmm. And then the people like, yep, yeah, finished bottom of the table, just couldn't turn it around. I'm like, how? That was really easy. What are you on about? That was dead simple. Um, but it's but again, so it, sometimes it's luck of the draw, isn't it? You know, I took over mentioned Rosenberg, took over a Rosenberg side who were too good and uh, still only just managed to do it on the last day. Jeb's got his hand up, he wants to uh, correct me. I'm sure I got relegated with Wickham. <laughs> <laughs> I've just I've just brought up the I've just found because I, I used to keep it all recorded yeah i got relegated with <laughs> i finished 20 seconds uh, yeah it know. was easy apparently, apparently yeah, exactly. it was, dead it was easy, easy. Yeah. i did finish bottom but yeah uh i couldn't get on with any of the players i signed jordan i on loan which was the worst idea ever <laughs> <laughs> yeah and yeah yeah we finished 51 points with yeah we, we got like really high points total but yeah we, we finished with, uh 20 22nd or 21st <sighs> jeff linton couldn't save you yeah <laughs> 
awful. I know, unbelievable. Yeah, but yeah. So I think the yeah. highest person, yeah, somebody got to tenth. That was the highest person we got in that one. So yeah, that that must have been on because no, it was, a, it was doing... a Darren Wood, but I don't know. Is that Darren one Wood. Yes, I know. Oh, Darren Wood. Not... Well done, Darren Wood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not Darren Wood. Not and then you would you and Arn were second. So it's... Army and Arn. Okay, there we go. Yeah. There you got we go. Scott Correct. Cash get got, got got the golden boot for you. Uh, you'd have finished twelfth had it not been for Tony effing Pulis. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's all coming back now. It's yeah. all coming back now. <laughs> so there we are. I feel like we need to get these two in a room together and sort out this. <laughs> these differences yeah <laughs> oh honestly honestly so uh, honestly. join us next week for with our special guest tony pulis <laughs> yeah oh can you imagine that all i'm saying if i was locked in a room with tony pulis and we both had some kind of terrible illness and i had two syringes of cure i'd inject myself twice i despise that man awful Absolutely awful. Come at me, Pulis fans. There aren't many of you. There aren't many of you at all. Um, wow. Good. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Stand by it. Stand by the whole thing. Um, right. There we go. Let us know about your relegation dogfight experiences. And if you could do us a massive favor and not lie like Jebaru has, that would be a huge, <laughs> huge bonus. Too easy. Too easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I'm, I, I mean, Jeff, I was going to ask you about your Morecambe save, but what is it? Oh, yeah, we're, we, you know, we're still in, the, you know, we're in League Two, but we're also in the Champions League. You know, how's that going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Morecambe, it's improved. Let's say that season mm-hmm. four was mm-hmm. a write-off again. I think I need to double check. I think we finished tenth uh, that season again, so it wasn't great outside the playoffs. Could get really a run of form going as per usual. Uh, but the one standout was previously mentioned Marcus Dakers. Uh, he got 30 goals in the season, finished Golden Boot, also won the Northwest League Two Player of the Year. What a guy! He also won Player of the Huge. Year in League Two as well. So we ticked a load of stuff off the objectives list. He's also moved into that uh, icons position. I'm oh. not in any of them, I'm not even favorite personnel still. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so we moved into season five after finishing temp, and we, we were just asked, you get in the playoffs this time? Go on, you finally get somewhere with it. We picked up, uh, I think we've already chatted about it, actually, uh, Shakiri. So I've mm-hmm. picked up Shakiri, mm-hmm. and then Kate Gordon as well on the free transfer. Ted Curd of notable notes. Also, the wonderfully named Dante Casanova on loan uh, as a right back. From Sunderland, yes. He's act- I've actually got two decent fullbacks, which is quite good. So hey. I've got Dante Casanova in on loan. I've got Thierry Small in on loan as well. So he's a good all round left back. So we've moved, changed the system a bit. We're now on a four three three, so three directly across the middle, two wingers, and then uh, a target forward up front, which is obviously Dakers. But then I've got Kieran Clark, who's a regen, who is uh, he's eighteen now. Uh, and he has 14 jumping reach and he's six foot five and he can head the ball better than Dakers. He's got five goals already for me this season, which is quite nice. And we've hit the ground running really, really, really well. We're 26 games in and we're sitting pretty at the top of the table, four points clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, and lost three games. The 4 3 3 just works quite nicely, just rotating the two strikers in and out, bringing in McNeil sometimes up there as well. bianchieri has been rubbish to put it nicely, but I might be able to turn him over because he was free, so I might be able to get some money for him. Uh, centre back, centre backs. <laughs> centre backs. <laughs> centre back <laughs> combination of Will Sweet and her, uh, the other guy. I completely forgot his name. That helps, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, Jaden Warner and uh, Will Sweet. So Will Sweet's a 19-year-old uh, ex-Arsenal prospect. Uh, he's six foot three, 18 jumping reach, gets a few goals, corners and stuff like that. He's been really good. He's starting to improve. Uh, seeing like above seven averages for defenders is a beautiful thing. It's not a thing seen very often, I've found. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's just because half my teams can't defend. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went out the League Cup. FA Cup were into the third round. We got Spurs away, so a bit of a payday off that. I don't know. We might actually do it. 
Shakiri's been surprisingly all right as well. He's got five assists, uh, 6.9. Uh, he is declining at an alarming rate. <laughs> his physicals have gone, yeah, his physicals are now down to like sixes. Because he's still got balance, but that's about it. Like, he's got balance, but he's got no strength to actually stay up if somebody taps him. Uh, so I think, yeah, it'll be a, a one and done for Shakiri. But like I said, he's, he's performing quite well. A few assists, not just off corners as well. So. And he's playing better than uh, JJ McKinnon's like been one of my standout players all all the way through the stage, and I thought mm-hmm. I would have lost him a couple of times, but he's been absolutely dreadful this season. Like he's on a six point six six average compared to over sevens every other season. I just can't get a tune out of him, and I argue with him because he's not training well. There's actually nothing wrong with him, like in terms of his. He's not unhappy. He's nothing on the no concerns. He's happy with everything else. He's just not playing well. There's no change of system either. He's playing exactly the same position where he normally plays, just not performing. So mm. it might be somebody to move on. Who knows? Uh, yeah, that's where we're up to with it. So we're halfway through the season. I'm probably going to stream a bit today and then maybe even tomorrow as well because, you know, everyone's got to get a day off tomorrow because it's bank holiday. It's lovely, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll, we'll try and get some more because I've, I've not streamed for, well, since last time we did the network, so I've not streamed more for about two, three weeks. So I think... Mm. get out there and stream it and we'll see where we go so who knows next time i might have a promotion update who knows or i might have completely bottled it which is probably more likely because you know jeb thinks make <laughs> make a state make a clear statement now jeb do you think this is your season You're gonna get out of uh league two maybe perfect <laughs> thank you very, very much clear. appreciate yeah. that yeah. lovely um, yeah. cheers pal nice one yes nice <laughs> cheers pal um on the subject of streaming on the subject of streaming, mm. you've briefly mentioned it there. The network save. Yes. I've heard a rumor that it's coming back this week. Oh, um, oh. It's, I think, Thursday night. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Thursday, the 7th of May. Nope, the 9th of May, because the 7th is a Tuesday. Ignore that. Numbers are difficult. <laughs> um, Thursday, the 9th of May. We, uh, we kick off season six proper. So we yep. we played one game, didn't we? We played one mm-hmm. game of season and, six. And we done, all won. And Indeed. we all won. Hooray yeah. for us. Look at us go. Um, yeah. Harvey Barnes came on as a sub for me <laughs> at Anfield and assisted the game winning goal in the 88th minute. So he's quite good, is Harvey. Lovely. So I know what a treat. So yeah, we'll be back on Thursday for some mm. more FMT network save. We'll start the season good and proper. Yep, and uh, yep, you you watched Jeb scupper all of my transfer deals by offering three hundred million pounds for each player that I would like to sign. <laughs> yeah, so by the end of the season, I need to address forty million pounds worth of Premier League losses and mm-hmm. sixty nine million nice worth of hey. continental losses. So yeah, there we are. So right. I could get I could get banned from the from European competitions for a season, or and I could also get a deduction of five points in the following season as well. So there you go, Ooh. FFP going to haunt me. <laughs> there you go. Not fump. That's I feel so, I feel sorry for whoever's taken charge of Fulham because I think they might have FFP <laughs> issues as well. <laughs> <after> Kev, Kev. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the good thing about it, because I've looked at it since from the perspective of the Spurs manager, is that a lot of their players are very high value because I couldn't bring the ones into Spurs that I wanted to. <laughs> so if they want to sell some off, they've got some very good assets. Oh, okay. Yeah, but they just have to somebody that wants to buy them. That's the only problem. I mean, yeah, Kev, so it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's just Kev. I, I have it's... bought one or two. <laughs> yeah. Kev just keeps going cap in hand to Daniel Levy. Please, sir, I want some more Fulham players. I need to spend £170 million on a goalkeeper again. <laughs> it's It was 60-something, thank you very much. And he didn't do me badly. He got me back-to-back Champions League spots. Well. <laughs> did did he do that? Yeah, it was say. all him. Are you sure? All yeah. Gavin Bazzuni. Yeah, Gavin Bazzuni. Yeah, sure. 16 <laughs> clean sheets, 10 goals. Yeah, Gavin assists. Bazzuni's never had above a seven in his career so far. Yeah, so just, <laughs> just putting it out there. <clears throat> He Worth, was fine. <laughs> he was, f- yeah, that's what I want for 60 million pounds. Yep. Yep. Fine. 
adequate yeah there we go <laughs> good well if you enjoyed this three minutes of bickering you're going to love <laughs> thursday night because my goodness gracious me uh, uh, we're gonna have a great time there's gonna be songs there's gonna be special guests from jeb's library of voices there's gonna be all sorts of yeah. madness yeah, pretend, i was just gonna say is it is is the FMT network save like the song stuff? Is is this like Drake and Kendrick Lamar? Have you got to do a response track now, Rich? I feel <laughs> like Harvey I should. Barton's, yeah. I and then Ke yeah, Kev's I... immediately got one to send back at you. Like he's already, he's already <laughs> wrote it. Like yeah. Mm, <laughs> and weird he just, that is. I've just, take, got, I've just got take... an album dedicated to Harvey Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> but in the one that Kev responds to, he's just gone too far, and we have to end the save and yeah. end the, on yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Kev actually swears, and then just the whole <laughs> system just collapses. <laughs> Good. So you got that to look forward to on Thursday. Uh, so yeah, come hang out with us. We'll have a good time. Absolutely. Possibly. Absolutely, we will. Uh, fellas, yeah. that feels very much to me like we've just recorded a podcast. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. Can't believe good. it got relegated. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh. Before we do just wrap up, can I just say that I was in Road to Legends this week. It didn't really work out for me, but I had a good time with Road to Legends themselves. They're a great, uh, well-run drafting competition. So if anybody's interested in drafting and you get the opportunity to go in there, please do. Um, but yeah, I got knocked out of the group stages in their finals week that I wasn't supposed to be in in the first place. I uh, went in for an unfortunate event for Armstrong who couldn't get his internet to work. So I deputized for him didn't quite go my way but it was a good competition to go and do so anybody interested please go give them all the love mm -hmm. absolutely go do some drafting go do some drafting i'm just going to say it out loud now so we have to commit to it at some point i feel like it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world if we started to look at dates for another fmt versus the community because i yeah love those let's evenings. do one of those so let's let's look into those shall we let's look into that so if somebody else could uh create a really really fun retro custom database in the next <laughs> like, you know six weeks or so hugely appreciated um yeah if you don't want to do it we'll just do something else instead let's do that Cool, cool, cool. Lovely. Right, lads, it's been an absolute pleasure today. Just before we sign off, um, Jeb, you've mentioned Morecambe Streaming. Where can the people find you doing that? Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Jebaroo. Fun spa. That's you. That is, yeah. you. that is you. That's where you go, the master of leverage. That's where mm -hmm. you'll find them. Uh, Kev, what about you, my friend? If people wanted to watch you uh, rolling in the aisles, where mm. could they do so? Uh, so you can find me at the United City FM on Twitch every weekday afternoon, 3 till 5 p.m. But I'd like to give an additional shout out this week, if I can, to somebody that we've uh, spoken about before and given a shout out before uh, for various things. But D-Boy Plays this week provided me with a theme tune for my channel, which is awesome. Uh, loved it. Uh, love him to pieces. He's such a talented guy. And he just does it because he wants to share his gift around the community, which is amazing. So shout out to D-Boy Plays. Thank you very much for the work that you do. Um, and go check him out on his live streams whenever he's around, because he's on several times a week. So make sure you go check out D-Boy Plays. Please, please do. If you've heard the Sad Ocean Man song mm -hmm. on my streams, that's just D. And he just did it. He just, he just did it, just because he's really good at doing things. God, Sorry. clever, han oh. be, be, Before you, you were gone, you were going to say he's clever and handsome. He's clever and handsome D-boy players. I've interrupted that. I do apologise. But I've just found out my, my parting message from the chairman at Wickham. <laughs> oh. <laughs> do you want me to read it out verbatim? Please. Go. Please. It's a real shame that your time here has to end under these circumstances, but we have to look out for the best interests of the club and we'll take the necessary steps to ensure we continue to move forward. We are pleased to be rid of you and hope we never meet again in the future. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. wow. Oh. It was like, oh, oh, did I leave that bit in? Oh, God. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh. That FM is cuts savage. Deep. Oh, F it really knows how to, who uh, SI is writing these because they. <laughs> I had I had it this week. I had, I had, I had an article come. Nico Schultz is now ready to trust you again. I was like, <laughs> Oh God, <laughs> what have I done, <laughs> Nico? I'm so sorry. 
Oh, no, not Nico Schultz. No, he's a, he's a bad man. Uh, a different different German player with a similar sounding name. Uh, I don't want Nico Schultz to ever trust me again. Awful, awful man. <laughs> um, goodness, though. Oh, the way it makes you feel. It just hurts. Cuts you to your absolute core, doesn't it? Oh, just... Yeah. Oh. So you lie down and think about that, even though it was what FM twenty one. Yeah, yeah. I'm still not over that. I'm still not over that. I think honestly, when when I think that's going to be the thing for FM twenty five, it's just gonna it's gonna go proper psycholo- psychological warfare on you, isn't it? You're going to get these messages, but it's every little press officer, your little you know new gen created press officer face. It's just going to come up with like a picture of one of your parents. I can't always say disappointed <laughs> in you. Oh. <laughs> Mum, I'm sorry. I'll try really, really hard at Wickham. I promise. It's a horrible, horrible business. There you go. Well, on on that, on that damaging piece of psychological news, um, I think we should probably end the podcast. Um, uh, good lord, Twitch.tv forward slash Rich Owens FM as well. If you want to watch me doing things and just you know trying to regain the trust of people whose hearts I've broken. My goodness gracious me, it's too much. It's just too much. Uh, Thank you for joining us for another episode of Football Manager Therapy. I just I can't get over that. I can't get over that. That's horrible. Oh, God, I want to think of something cheerful, but I just can't. There's nothing good left in this life. It's just, oh, oh, it's just all YouTube.com forward slash why Callum. There you go. Go find Callum. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. There's the happiness. There's the joy. There's the joy. YouTube.com forward slash why Callum. There's, the, there's the, the sweet relief from life's torment. Bless him. Bless Callum. Hi, Callum. We miss you. Um, watch his YouTube. It's dead good. That was an episode of Football. I can't even talk now. I'm so upset. Oh, my goodness. Was that was another that. episode of Football Manager Therapy. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you on the next one. Hopefully, if the Wiccan board don't have anything to say about it. <laughs> Take care. Love you lots. Bye-bye. Mit Herrn Adler, it's time to get it started Football manager, therapy, we're never half-hearted Pumping up the beats, we're bringing the heat Rich, Callum, Jeff and Kev, we can't be beat We're diving deep into the world of tactics made Sharing stories, laughing hard, it's never too late Sharing techno beats, they're the soundtrack to our game Podcast on the rise, we're taking over, it's our fame Master plan, Callum keeping us entertained, he's the funny man. down formations like a Jenga tower analyzing stats every minute every hour rich with the strategies he's got the master plan Callum keeping us entertained he's the funny man